fellow member. A damned singular honor for two of one family to be elected to the House of Burgesses. Will and Lawrence can't say I approve of politicians, though. Found them rather dull cheese in the House of Lords. But from the looks of you two, you can't do much harm. See that you don't. We can but try, Uncle. <laughs> it's a long ride, Will. Yes. Goodbye, Father. Farewell. Well, George. Goodbye, Uncle. You will take care of my two ladies. Only if you promise to take care of that cough properly. And, George, you must come and see us in Williamsburg. Yes. Cross my heart. A letter every day. I shall perish of loneliness. George, when you marry, you must choose a wife who has all the right answers. <laughs> as I did. I do implore thee, O benign Caesar, to spread the great cloak of thy big... Benignity. Benignity. Morning, Anne. Morning, Uncle. What are you going to show me this morning, George? Well, sir, I thought we might ride due west to the foothills of the Blue Ridge. It's a portion of your property that you've never seen. Lead on. <laughs> oh, your book. Oh, and George, no dancing practice next week. My father and I are going to Williamsburg. To see Lawrence and Will? Yes, and to meet a young lady named Sally Carey. We just received Will's letter, and he does nothing but rave about her beauty, her charm, her everything. I wouldn't be surprised if he intends to marry her. Our Will? Yes, our Will. Marriage? It'll ruin the poor lad for the hunt. Lead on! Lawrence's little brother, George? I've been hearing all this talk about Lawrence's little brother. I never expected such a handsome giant. <laughs> I'm very pleased to make your acquaintance, little George. Ma'am. Not ma'am. You'll call me Sally. And now, in the sacred portals of your new home, welcome to Belvoir. Coughing up blood, George, and we're all petrified. Whatever for? I'm fine now. He is not. Don't let my dearest wife alarm you, George. So I just. <coughs> you see? I will not go. You will, or I shall become sicker. But to leave you. I insist. Else you disappoint father brother and new sister. Please. I promise I shall rest all the while you are gone. So go, my dear. Take George in my place and dance the night away. Me? You. I order it. I'm your superior officer, and I order you. Face the music.
no, Miss Sally. I... You'd rather eat than dance with me? No. No, no, I only meant that I... I... You only meant you're not sure I can keep up with you with those long legs. Oh, do try me, George. Do give me a chance. No, 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 I only meant that I... I I'm... I meant I'm a very bad dancer. I really can't... You were much too modest, Mr. Washington, sir. The sister Anne says you're her best pupil. I'm her only pupil. Well, I Get in place. George, you came. I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> You must pay attention. Many young women will fancy you, George. Mm -hmm. And you must learn what they'll be saying with a fan. Fan? I, I, I... Oh, it has a language all its own. That means... Follow me. In other words, she wants to be alone with you. Oh, <laughs> I see. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right hand open, right hand draws it across forehead, and eyes mean... We're being watched. <laughs> no, no, no! Not really! Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, if she draws it across her cheek, it means I love you. And if she puts the fan to her lips, be kissed. Now, you're ready to converse by fan with any temptress. I had no idea there was a language. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've kept you from the other guests. Oh, no, from the rest. No, I, you I, must be just a... Uh, I, I uh, enjoy your company. But I... I, I I'm, oh, you must... Learn to appreciate what you are. Tall, handsome, and ready to devastate the ladies. Devastate them. Oh, dear. Yes. I've, I've oh. neglected my wonderful husband. Oh, no, not at all. I'm very glad you're getting to know my precious Sally, George. Yes. Isn't she beautiful? Yes. Very. <laughs> You've embarrassed George. Oh, that's the last thing I want to do to my very best friend. May I have the pleasure, my dear? But the pleasure is mine. <laughs> Dance with all the prettiest ladies, George. Now that you know the language of the fan, who knows what adventures await you? Nothing more you can do. You've been at that bedside day and night. Yes, but I, 
How can... George, you need fresh air. Or you come down with a very malady that now tortures your poor brother. I hate to leave him. Even for a moment. He gave so much of himself to me uh, under very difficult circumstances when I was growing up. You love him. He can't die. George. that I be appointed to succeed, Lawrence, as adjutant of Virginia. His lordship, eh? Mm. Yes. Well, adjutant is a very important post. Uh, what are your qualifications? Well, I've been a surveyor on the frontier, sir, and with the money earned, I've purchased lands in the wilderness. I know this country as well as any man. And I am, sir, my brother's brother. Well, you're in luck, young man. As you know, I have decided to divide the colony into four separate military districts. Uh, I might um, find it possible to appoint you adjutant to District 4. The smallest? It carries a stipend of 100 pounds a year and the rank of major. Would it be possible, Governor, to appoint me to District 2? It includes my own county of Fairfax. It is also the largest. Is it, sir? I must say, you have enough gall for someone twice your age. I have a great many candidates for these posts, each one older and more experienced, each one decorated in military service. Your only advantage is your connections, so I suggest you content yourself with District 4. Yes, sir. Congratulations, Major. Now I should like to consult with you upon a matter of great import. The King of France, not satisfied with the vast province of Canada, has decided to make open trespass on British soil. He has sent soldiers into our territory, thus flouting British sovereignty established by God and King. They build forts, trade with our Indians and otherwise encroach upon our sacred rights. I have received orders from His Gracious Majesty to send an emissary demanding that they depart. Sir. Before you recommend someone, sir, I think you should know that the French are a treacherous people. This emissary will be in considerable danger. Yes, sir, but... Which is why I need someone who can travel hundreds of miles through unknown mountains, has experience with the Indians, and is possessed of a hearty constitution. You were about to recommend someone, sir? Your description fits only me, sir. This is your interpreter for the French, Jacob Von Braun. A pleasure, sir. And this is my guide, Caleb. Quinn! <laughs> you know each other. <laughs> yes, well, we spent an interesting evening in Mr. Quinn's company a while. Always man. at your service, gentlemen. Always at your service. <laughs> pleasure. Uh, I got a little something here to warm us on our trip, Mr. Washington. <laughs> <laughs> You should be well taken care of. I must leave you here. Sally will worry if I'm not home by dusk. Thank you, my friend.
Tell me, how did a euchre a smart lad like you into carrying the king's message? Oh, it's an honor, sir. Uh, fool's errand, more like it. What's that supposed to mean? I didn't tell you. Tell me why. Uh, that French commandant has agents living with the bloody savages. Why, he needs only whisper. Some British scalps will be lifted all along the frontier. <sighs> You're a cheerful fellow, aren't you, Mr. Quinn? No, uh, keep your laugh, Mr. Washington. To our last breath. <laughs> <laughs> How did they know we were coming? Huh. We've been watched every step of the way since we crossed the Alleghenies. Well, the French have eyes everywhere? Hmm. They're called Indians. I have brought this Medoc with me from Canada. I am grateful, Major, that you provide the opportunity to drink it. Santé. Your help, Commandant. Ah. Now, about the letter. I have uh, not only read the letter, but I have sent it to my superior. We are waiting for now, an envoy with a reply. As to the contents. Ah, uh, yes. The matter of royal sovereignty. That, my young friend, is the impasse. You English say the territory belonged to George II, the we French say it is the property of Louis XV. <laughs> My king desires that the French do not encroach on any land south of Canada. <laughs> and if we uh, refuse to obey the order of your king? Then my governor would be empowered to drive you out by force of arms. Do not make idle threats, young man. I thought you not make idle threats, sir. I know my king, and I do not involve his name frivolously. There, you see. <laughs> this is how it begins. <laughs> Perhaps we are striking the first blow in this very room. Uh, Major, you and I could be starting a war. That commandant's playing cat and mouse with you, Major. His messenger arrived last night. He figures to just let you shiver in the wind till he's good and ready. Uh, but that's your answer. Major, mm -hmm. the commandant awaits you. We are not enemies yet. Here is the reply. We do not find ourselves obliged to obey your king. We are here to stay. This territory is French. Bon voyage, Major. Like an Indian. I can't tell you how good it is to see you again. Alive and with your hair on your head. 
Come, come, come. We were all so worried about you. But after he plied me with a fine French wine, I found Saint Pierre charming for a Frenchman. Is it true? No, every word. <laughs> George. Oh, George, George, how wonderful to have you back. How many weeks, months, I should say, did you see any Indians or those terrible Frenchmen? Yeah. Sally, look at him. George has been telling us about the expedition. Go on, George, would you sit there? Oh. <laughs> well, actually, I have more vital news. We are to fight the French. Fight? Yes. If diplomacy will not get them out of the Ohio Valley, we must drive them out. How, George? The House of Burgesses will fund a regiment of 300 men. We hope to enlist Catawba and Cherokee Indians from the Carolinas. Three companies of British regulars will be sent from the other colonies. Colonel Joshua Fry is commanding officer, and I am to be second in command. My boy, how extraordinary. That's your dream come true. How proud Lawrence would be. With what rank? I am Lieutenant Colonel. Extraordinary. Oh, George! My turn, oh. sir. Heavens, I've never seen a Lieutenant Colonel blush before. <laughs> George is home. George! It's good to see you again, Mother. And be home with the family. About time you took care of your own, instead of watching over Malone's sovereign empire. I trust you're home for good this time. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. I'm to form an army to defend us against the French. I leave tomorrow. You cannot. Washington. <laughs> Your hair's grown. Hey, pretty uniform. Well, Mr. Van Brown. Congratulations, Brown. Colonel Washington. Thank you very much. You look thirsty. Come in. Come in. Hard journey, huh? Uh, I got some for you, Mr. Washington. <laughs> ah, good, good. So, our mission is to strengthen the garrison on the Monongahela River. But our commanding officer, Colonel Fry, hasn't arrived yet. And he won't. Sir, the word is that uh, well, he's either sick or just got no stomach to fight the French. So what's our first job, Commander? Hmm. Well, if we are to push further into the wilderness, I need more horses, food, pay for the men. I write to Williamsburg to complain, and I get nothing but silence. And I need more fighting men. Where can we find them? Indians. My scouts report that the French are sending presents by the wagon loads to all the Indians. I've got nothing to counter with. Well, I think we know a few Indians who still hate the French. Get you down, Colonel. You're too big to miss. Only two sentries on duty. The rest of them are in those tents, fast asleep. Frenchy likes to snooze after he eats. Now, come on, get down, get down, Colonel.
John Washington has murdered an ambassador. Gentlemen, you are, uh, gentlemen, we will observe the rules of good order. Please, gentlemen, gentlemen. We attacked the French on all sides, and after an engagement of several minutes, we killed 10 and took 20 prisoners. No state of war exists between England and France. Has our hot-tempered young colonel assumed the authority to start such a war by shooting French ambassadors? Uh, sir, shall we allow Colonel Washington to speak for himself? These officers pretend they were coming on an embassy mission, but as you will see by these instructions, Washington has enclosed captured French papers which establish that the party he attacked was in fact sent to spy on us. My God, do you realize what that means, Governor? No matter what young Washington says, he did kill an ambassador. An ambassador and a spy. You we have no proof. A point we can debate here in this room, far removed from a battlefield, but one Colonel Washington could not pause to consider in the fury of battle. We will observe the rules of good order. Good sense would help more, I think. Consider it in the fury. British regulars are arriving. Halt the troops, Sergeant. Washington. Captain James Mackay, His Majesty's regular company of foot here at the request of your Virginia governor and Burgesses. Welcome to Fort Necessity, Captain Mackay. I believe the first order of business is to provide cover for the men and rum for the commander. Perhaps it's not the king's own, but it'll do. Indeed. To His Majesty, King George II. Aye, to His Sovereign Majesty. <laughs> now, sir, may I have your muster roll so I may see how many effectives I have to oppose the French? Captain, this is my command. I will see your muster. I think not. Any regular officer outranks any provincial officer. But I have been in command here for six months. And I have been an officer in His Majesty's regular service for 18 years. My commission comes directly from Governor Dinwiddie. And mine from the King himself. By God, he's my King too, sir. And I resent your assumption that His Majesty is as contemptuous of us provincials as you regulars are. Colonel, I was scouting about four miles north of here when I spotted the Frenchies heading this way. There's a lot of them. They got savages with them too. But we'll make our stand here. Get the men to it. They're coming fast. Assembly. If you won't fight under me, Captain Mackay, I'd be obliged to have you fight with me. Spread out, men! Fill in the gap, soldiers. We can pile up tons of earth and logs and it won't change that. This damn tumble down fort's gonna be a trap, I tell you. Sir, 